evening, everybody. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some more Doctor News. News from in around the universe that may or may not have. We need more Doctor Who news. I'm getting bored. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's just been amazing to me. If you go around all the big Doctor Who sites, there's like, they're in the same, you know, pinch that I've been in. There's really not much to report on. I've just been sitting back letting some stuff gather. But <clears throat> some interesting things did happen over the last day or two. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what they are. All right. Let's start off with, okay, dummy me. I should have had this ready. You see, that's what you get when you go do something impromptu and you don't think, hmm, maybe I should have pre-planned for this thing, you know. And then, oh, you know, that happens. But okay, let's take a look. Let's get it started, shall we? First up. Okay, this is the cover of the Lester Mercury Moore. Notice the headline here, From Albert Square to the TARDIS. Lester actress Rocky Thakrar on Life After EastEnders. Now, there was a very interesting thing in this particular article because she did kind of sort of address the big question. All right, let's run into it. Bam, here we go. This is, the, this is just the one that they had up over on Cold Box. Rocky Thakrar says... "Quote unquote, see what happens to the you know, to the Doctor Who companion rumors." And let's just drop right back to the skinny, skinny here. Let's go right into it. Asked about the rumors by Lester Mercury Moore magazine, Thakrar commented, "Quote: My way of looking at everything is just to be here and see what happens. There's such a vast range of projects and roles that I'm open to see what comes." So, kind of a hmm, interestingly vague answer. If she wasn't involved, she could have just said no. But at the same time, I am still wondering if this is not all just a setup. I'm not kidding. I'm, you know, I think she looks, she looks good. A lot of people have been debating over the fact, oh, my God, she's a Muslim. I don't care. I actually, I don't, we don't even know. Is she Muslim? Could someone answer me that in the comment box? Because just because she played one, you know, I don't know. So we'll find out more about her because I'm not kidding. I've been trying to dig more stuff up on her, but, you know, there's very little data out there. All I know is she was born in Leicestershire and, and what do you call it? So. Plus, she was on East Ender. So you see, uh, see, how, see how great my notes are? All right, moving on. This is a nice little clip that's um, put back up over on uh, BBC. Oh, gosh, sheesh. BBC One. Free falling without a harness. And it's very interesting to get, you know, they tell about how the one scene we all was done in Heaven Sent. And it's a nice big green, green screen setup. You know, be sure to go check it out. Nice watch of a video. Moving on. Could an old Dr. Drew villain be the key behind the spinoff series class? And it says here the new BBC three series might have a baddie who we've seen in the Hooniverse before. Now, they said they found out a lot more about the upcoming Dr. Who spinoff class after this week, including cast and basic premise. And, you know, people are speculating, of course, about how Peter Capaldi is going to be involved. And it says right here, as so, all right, all we know so far is the line from the official press statement, which is suitably vague. Quote, Cole Hill School has been a part of the Doctor Universe since the very beginning, but that has come at a price. All the time traveling over the years has caused the very walls of space and time to become thin. There's something pressing in on the other side, something waiting for its chance to kill everyone and everything to bring us all into shadow. Now, please don't tell me it's the shadow. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Because trust me, Shadow was a lame ass side henchman from all the way back in the Armageddon factor. He wore a skull on his head, you know. Oh man. Okay, so you know, they go into more speculation. Oh, there he is. See? That ugly dude right there. I doubt it's him. Come on. He and a black guardian didn't exactly get along too well. So <laughs> So, once again, it's more speculation, basically, about what's going on with the new series, since we know very little about it. Oh, yeah, we've just found out, you know, the cast and whatnot, but that's about it. Okay, Ninth Doctor returns in comic book form. Uh, April 13th, matter of fact, this is two days from now, sees the return of the Ninth Doctor, is played by Chris Freckleston in comic book form in the latest release from Titan. The series will now join the 10th, 11th, and 12th Doctors as a monthly ongoing title. It also features Rose, who's played by Billy Piper. Captain Jack is played by John Behrman. Um, check out, you know, if you want to look at all these, look at all these exclusive covers. Sheesh. Wowzers. If you want to take a look at them, boom, you click on them. They'll come up a little bit larger. Also, they got a little preview of the first couple pages if you want to go check that out as well. All right, moving on. BBC Books in the Blood. 
BBC Books have released details on next month's novel featuring 10th Doctor and Donna in the blood, and this is the latest to be written by Jenny T. Colgan. And here's a little synopsis here and whatnot if you want to go through and read it. Here it is, bam, bam, bam. Moving on. The Crown featuring Matt Smith to be released on Netflix in November. That's right. The, basically, they've released, revealed today that the original drama series, The Crown, which was created by Peter Morgan and featuring Matt Smith as Prince Philip and Claire Foy as Wolf Fall, or Full Fall, or Fall from Wolf Fall, and we know what Matt Smith's from, and as a Queen Elizabeth II will be released in all territories from the 4th of November. So if you're interested in that, or you want to see Matt, check out he's rocking the royal look there. No bow tie there, baby. You know, if it, <laughs> there's all the details you need right here. Okay. And next up, we have a little snippet here of uh, basically David Tennant behind the, behind the scenes. It's a nice little short video. It was backstage. And I'm not going to give this a watch. It's just, you know, so it's only like 21 seconds, but it's just a kick. Give it a look. Okay, and the team behind Doctor Who and the writer of Skins will give the Golden Compass a new life. Everybody remember the Golden Compass? Of course you don't, because nobody went to watch it. it. It was basically they tried to make a movie out of it a few years ago with like Nicole Kidman and whatnot, and it just didn't take. I think Sam Elliott was in that one too, if I remember right. It just didn't take. So what they have here is, I believe, is Julie Gardner amongst many others are going to be involved in the new reboot of this particular thing. So I don't know. I It, it looked like it was going to be a good story to me. I think I've only watched it once, and I made it like a half hour into it. And it, it just, you know, it, it was back when they were doing all the big Narnia movies, you know, stuff like that. You know, everybody was trying to cash in on the big epics of, you know, children's books. Okay, so. Once again, we got Chris Eccleston back, but only in comic book form. More speculation on class, more speculation on Rocky Thakrar. And the thing is, everybody's just basically saying, look, I think there's a whole lot of people on Twitter just saying, come out and confirm it already. Um, now, she has been doing a lot of weird things on Twitter, following certain people that are involved with the show, involved with class and all that. And, you know, basically they're taking that as written that she has landed the role. But the thing is, remember... <laughs> We've been led down the path to the Rose Garden before where we had to tip both through the tiptoe through the tulips, and it turns out they had just been fertilized with fresh manure. So it could be this is all the ruse, but at the, you know, she is a beautiful young lady, 32 years old, not too young, not too old, and it would give a whole new aspect to the companion. You know, heck, Martha, I think, was you know, a big, big departure from your regular companion. Hell, matter of fact, I think she's the only companion in the new show who actually walked away from the TARDIS on her own accord. And not got her mind zonked or turned into an immortal time lady because she had an attack of the dumbass. But, you know, it would be nice to see a new, you know, whole new culture or, or a companion with, you know, coming with a whole new cultural perspective into the TARDIS other than that standard contemporary English girl. No, nah, well, <laughs> you know how I rant and rave. Okay, until next time, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, hit y'all. You know, sure to pop a comment down into the comment box. If you don't see it at first, don't worry. I review all the comments. I get to read all the comments because I was getting trolled a while back. And, it, you know, don't worry. It'll be, you know, you'll, if your comment will eventually appear, it's just I have to pop up and approve them when I get home from work. So, Okay, until next time, everybody. Take care, Tata. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out of here, baby. Bye-bye. <laughs>